Hey guys, it's Sean. Uh, welcome back for my fifth episode. Fifth episode. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, more in detail about uh, my avoidance issues. I think this is one of the issues very common with a lot of vets uh, to some degree or another. Um, personally, I used to call it my bunker complex before uh, I started seeing mental health. Um, I kind of knew what I was going through and recognized it and I if I had to describe it to other people this is how I would, I would describe it my bunker complex like I was just diving into a bunker and just putting my hand, hands over my heads and you know like an ostrich shoving his head into the sand which doesn't actually happen by the way it's a myth um, and just avoiding everything um, just jamming straight into, into my apartment after work and not poking my head out till the next morning when I had to go back to work. Um, a lot of things I used to do, you know, if I had to do grocery shopping, I would do it on the way home and even that reluctantly. Um, if I had to go out once I got home, uh, it was for something that was definitely needed like booze, uh, dip, cigarettes back when I smoked. I mean, something like life limmer eyesight like seriously seriously no shit i need uh it wasn't just a oh, i'm out of salt let me run to this run to this grocery store down the block uh that, that shit didn't happen um i think uh where a lot of this stemmed from was um my girlfriend dumped me during my first deployment uh, about two days before I was due to fly home for R&R. For &R. Uh, I sent her a quick email. Uh, she had three kids. Uh, she was going to leave, none of, none of which were mine. She was going to leave all three of her kids with uh, her family, her mom and dad. And I was going to fly back, and we were going to spend all two weeks of my R&R &R, uh, on a cruise or somewhere off by ourselves. She sent me an email, um, said, basically... Uh, I'm not in love with you like I thought you were or thought I was, and uh, you can still come out and visit me, but uh, it's, it's just not going to be like what you expect. And so basically, the bottom line is, I'm dumping you. You can still come visit me, but uh, we're not going to have sex. We're not going to do anything together. Uh, fuck you. So, uh, I, and she CC'd her best friend. <laughs> Uh, which I found out uh, once I finally got home on leave. So anyways, as soon as I got that, basically I shut down emotionally. I, as soon as I read that, I didn't reply. I closed my email, turned off the computer, went back to my first sergeant and said, Jimmy, I'm not going home on leave. And he goes, the fuck are you talking about? This was, again, uh, just to set, set the stage, this is... Uh, Late, late 2007, no, early 2007, during the surge in, in Iraq, I was, this is our eighth month, eighth or ninth month into the tour, so I was the last group for my, my troop, my CAV troop, to go on leave. If, if I didn't go, this was the last rotation, and uh, Jimmy looked at me and goes, I don't give a fuck, if you go home, you, you're going home. So what, your girlfriend broke up with you, I think it's the first time? And I said, yeah, but you don't understand. I got nothing else going on at home. My brother's in inpatient rehab for coke. My parents are going to have their, uh, while I'm scheduled to be home on leave, if I do go home, they're, they're going to have their last, uh, their final court case for their divorce. And my girlfriend has nothing doesn't want to have anything to do with me. The fuck I got to go home for? And he goes, I don't give a fuck if you go home and spend two weeks in a goddamn hotel room, jump inside a scotch bottle, and don't come out until you got to come back to Iraq. I don't care. You're going home. So uh, I didn't quite do that. Uh, I went home and to, here to South Carolina and uh, did manage to see my brother in, in rehab and Spent some time with my parents, um, but uh, I didn't even re respond to my girlfriend. Never, never, ever responded to her to this day. Um, 
so with that, it just kind of solidified <clears throat> what I'd been thinking earlier and what I'd talked about in some other videos about how um, you, you just kind of get in this mindset, a sort of survival mode, that you're dead already and there's nothing you can do about it, right? It just kind of solidified, yep, what you've been, that mode you've been in, it's the right mode. Keep it up. This is just yet more proof that you don't need to fuck with all this outside bullshit and distractions and emotional uh, horse shit that's going on in your life. Just focus on the fucking mission um, and focus on the next 10 minutes and then get past the next 10 minutes then the next 10 minutes. Um, so that kind of... I don't want to say it created my issues, but it definitely solidified some thought processes I had going on at the time uh, moving in and, and establish them for moving forward um, so he you know he even you know three three deployments later uh, nine years later um, it, it got to the point where uh, I didn't go out with friends you know in the unit um, I still wasn't dating anybody still had no significant relationships um, every time my, my buddies wanted to go out, I'm like, ah, no, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm just going to stay home and, you know, chug some, some whiskey. Um, and what, what, what started happening, um, once I left Lewis and that, that was the deployment where, where my girlfriend dumped me, I was at three other, uh, two other, uh, Germany and then El Paso, Fort Bliss, uh, two other, uh, posts and deployments after that first one. Um, and within each each singular post uh, and post deployment, um, I noticed that my guys, my buddies, um, my my unit, they were asking me out to go less and less. Um, it got to the point where, you know, hey, you know what? Maybe I do want to go out with the guys this Friday or this Saturday, whatever. They would never ask me because so many times before that. I had said no. So they quit asking me because they know, oh, fuck, Sergeant Calloway's in a mopey mood and he's just going to stay in his room and get shit faced all by himself. But don't even ask because he's going to say no. Um, I, if you know anybody in that position, please don't stop asking them. Force them. Grab them by the fucking collar and say, D dickhead, you're coming out. I don't care if you get shit-faced or not. I don't care what we're doing. We're going for a walk in the woods. Uh, we're going to see a movie. You're going to see get get some dinner, have a few drinks, whatever. Grab them and tell them that, hey, this is what's happening with you. It's getting to the point where no one's going to ask you to go out with them. And we want you to go out with us. So get off your ass. Get your ass in a shower. Get dressed. And you're coming out with this. Please. I wish to God I had somebody that had uh, had the knowledge or wherewithal uh, back then to to tell me that. Because um, I missed out on a lot, a lot of fun times. And, and I'm not talking about just get, getting shit-faced for the sake of getting shit-faced. I missed out on a lot of friendships uh, and time with, with friends I'd already established um, because, because of my attitude back then. Um, so... Please, if, if you know somebody, if you got a battle buddy or, or a spouse that that that's feeling like that, just ah, no, I don't, I don't want to feel. I don't want to. I don't go out. Grab by the fucking collar. And tell them you're going out with us, dickhead. Um, what another thing I used to love to love to do is go see movies. Uh, because of my. Uh, innate anxiety I want to say fear but anxiety with crowds um, I could not do movies for the longest time and part of that was because just being in a, in a large building with a shit ton of other strangers uh, surrounding me but the biggest thing was in a line waiting to get you know some popcorn or something and some dickheads in line ahead of me going um um, let me get, um, sweet tarts, no, milk duds, what the fuck, I've known what the fuck I want to eat at the theater since I was six, 
Get the fucking food and get the fuck onto your theater. Jesus Christ, right? So that was another huge, huge uh, hang up for me. Uh, huge, huge block to, to being able to enjoy movies. It's just the, the thought of getting through that line to get my popcorn, my my sweet tarts, and, and my Coke and getting into the fucking theater. And another thing was sitting in the, in the middle of a crowd a bunch of other people I didn't know, especially all the assholes behind me. I that was a huge, huge uh, uh, turn off for me. Uh, so what I eventually learned how to do was um, when I wanted to go see a movie, uh, I saw quite a few big blockbuster movies like this: Fury, which is an amazing movie, um, Godzilla, uh, the original 2014 American Godzilla, um, and among many others. Uh, I, I would go on like a Wednesday or Thursday. At like the twelve forty-five or one ten showing, somewhere in that, in the middle of the week, mid mid late week, in the middle of the afternoon, um, and by far, there were so few people in the theater with me. Uh, it when I went to see Fury, for example, um, it 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 felt like a uh, um, like like a group therapy exercise because there was me and there were uh, I think about five couples all World War II veteran age um, and uh, that was it that was the only people and there was uh, a lady about a, a, one seat over from me and then on the other side of her was her husband uh, and I remember there, there was one scene early in the movie where the platoon leader's uh, tank gets blown up and dude's on the peels on fire because he's out of the hatch and he he falls out of the back and he's screaming and he puts his pistol to his head and blam and it was just like bam oh fuck because I you know I was a uh, striker commander during my first tour and I, it really kind of struck me as close and I heard all these horror stories about about vehicle vehicle commanders and uh, crews getting getting trapped in in uh, uh, you know during RPG breaches and all this stuff. So I was like, oh, I'm, I stayed, stood up and I almost left the theater. I'm walking up and down the ramp uh, just inside the door, pacing and trying to catch my breath and <laughs> like I'm fucking get, about to give birth, doing Lamas, breathing. And I came back and finally calmed down and sat down. And uh, just in time for this lady, uh, I realized she'd been uh, trying to calm her husband down. Like, it's only a movie, hun. It's only a movie. You're okay. Uh, you know, you you're you're in Washington. You're you're not you're not in, in Normandy or whatever. And and then as soon as I sat down, she she leaves her husband. She turns to me and reaches over a seat and a half and, and grabs my forearm and says, "It's okay, hon. It's okay. You're back in America. You're you're safe. You're safe. You you're not in wherever you think you are. Are you okay?" And I was just, I, fucking lost my shit. I was just. God damn, it was awesome. But anyways, that's kind of beside the point. So I, I, I learned that uh, <laughs> uh, going to see movies uh, in the middle of the week, in the middle of the afternoon was, was uh, you know, m movie subject aside, uh, much healthier for, for my uh, well-being and everyone else's well-being really around me. Um, so that, that was one way that I could still get out and still kind of interact with people. Um, with, without being overwhelmed or, or swamped um, by, by all these uh, these people and the pressures of having to interact with civilians. Um, so, and, and then gradually I'm, I'm able to, you know, now I'm able to, uh, I would never do it on my own. Um, if, if I'm going to the movies on my own, I would still choose middle of the week, middle of the afternoon. But it's not a problem for me to uh, go out with my brother and his girlfriend and her family uh to to a matinee and you know it's a theater full of you know 30 40 other people uh even with COVID you know um so I, I was able to work my way up to that um start small work up big um uh, another thing uh I've been kind of trying to do uh one uh not just for uh, getting out there and, and getting out of the house, 
um, but just just for my general physical health is going on walks uh, there there's a couple uh, wooded areas uh, near where I live uh, that um, have some great hiking trails uh, you know it's not just all flat there's some uh, changes in elevation so that's good good uh, for my health and trying to work out my knees and my back again and trying to rehabilitate them but also seeing other people on a trail and just interacting with them uh, and, and not freaking out and you know looking for snipers and uh, IEDs and uh, stuff like that it's just realizing that I'm back in the states I'm not in those those areas again um, I, I can get back out there uh, especially in, in these kind of terrain uh, this kind of terrain uh, like you know wooded areas and, and and not just be on hyper alert uh, for all this these danger signs and stuff like that so um, that's another thing I, I recommend is is trying to go for, go for a walk uh, go go with a, a buddy or a loved one you know bro, you know sibling uh, parents um, boyfriend girlfriend uh, husband wife whatever um, get out there just and just the more you do it, the more you realize, the more you, more comfortable you get, the more you realize that you don't have to be always be the one on alert. And um, you know, my my girlfriend doesn't know shit. Uh, I, I I gotta be on lookout for you know save our. You know you know you know you don't have to do that. You're back here in the states. Just enjoy nature, enjoy the walk, enjoy talking with somebody if that's who you're with, um, or just. In, enjoy nature again if you're by yourself listen to the birds you know squirrels whatever um don't don't you know trying to trying to get in that mindset there's not always a landmine around around the corner um so going on walks is is a great thing you know again if, if you're worried about you know being alone and getting in that mindset go with somebody uh, another one is is church um I'm personally, I'm not religious. I'm atheist, um, so I don't, I don't belong to any church groups. Uh, but that that is one thing I highly recommend if you are or have been in the past uh, in that that group mindset or you know part part of those groups. Uh, churches have one thing I will say about churches: they always have stuff going on, uh, trips or um, card games. You know. Uh, they, they, they always got a lot of uh, extracurricular stuff going on uh, just outside of Sundays. Uh, so I will say that for, for churches. They, they're great for that. Uh, if you want to, you know, especially if, you know, if you're up and willing, up to and willing to go out with um, family members, not just yours, but other people's groups of, of folks, couples, stuff like that. Uh, in my experience, churches always have some something going on, stuff going on. Uh, whether it's your local civilian church or um, check with uh, the local chapels on post. They're always doing stuff with boss, better opportunities for single soldiers. They've always got trips, skiing trips. I've got on boss trips organized by, by the chaplain, uh, the post chaplain. Uh like I said, even though I'm 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 uh, atheist, doesn't matter. They got all these these trips going on, and a lot of them are for for married folks, uh, you know, couples, couples retreats, that kind of thing. But uh, just as just as uh, many uh, single trips they have, they have just as many single trips. <laughs> I can remember how to speak English, um, so uh, that may, may be another uh, avenue. Uh, for, for you to get out there and do stuff and interact with, with people. Um, the other thing is, uh, don't avoid your family. I did this for a number of years. It was, uh, and it, it's a slippery slope. Um, I kept in touch with my brother more than any other family member, uh, just because he's a veteran and a more recent veteran than my father was. Um, and it was a little easier because we were best friends growing up, but it was tough, tough, tough keeping in touch with my parents. And, and part of that was uh, this just wicked cycle of it's been X months. If you let it go, you know, say two or three months, say, say three months. It's been three months since I spoke to either one of my parents. 
If I call them now, now i got to explain why it's been three months since I've talked to them. I don't want to have that fucking discussion. I'll put it off till tomorrow. And then I'll put it off till next week. And then I'll put it off till next month. And before you know it, it's been eight, nine months since you've spoke, spoken to your, to any a family member. And it's just it's just a snowball effect. It, 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 it's tough to break. Really tough to break. And I wish to God I knew um, a, a quick and easy method uh, or reason to, to break for you to break that cycle. That that's highly personal. You you gotta find something in yourself to just it's just like ripping off a band-aid. Been six months since I talked to my mom, because I'm just I don't want to fucking deal with her going over this guilt trip about is it something I did? Why haven't you called me? Uh am I a bad mother? Blah blah blah. I don't want to hear that shit, so I keep putting it off. And the more you put it off, the worse in your head. Uh, their um, recriminations become, and it, it's 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 a tough cycle to break. It's it's almost like addiction, or you know, just like anything else we're talking about these mental health issues. It's it's a tough cycle to break. It's one of those things, just like a band aid. You got to rip it off, uh, and then the thing is, don't let it go that long. Doesn't have to be every day. Doesn't have to be every week. Um, my mom always wanted me to, you know, make it a regular thing, uh, the last Friday of every month. I didn't want to have that pressure on me because what if, you know, I had to work late that Friday and suddenly it's, you know, past midnight or whatever and she, she's already asleep. I want to still call her and go, well, I tried to call you, but you, you weren't awake. So see you next month. You know, so it's find something that works for you uh, or, well, I was going to say, ask your family to call you if you didn't call them. But I mean, my family still called me all the time and I, you know, listened to the voicemail and went, oh, I feel like an asshole. Why am I such a shit bag? I'll call her tomorrow. And then the next day. I get home from work and I go, you know, I surely call my mom, but oh, fuck, I don't feel like dealing with that shit. I'll call her tomorrow, and then boom, we're off to the races again. So, I, this one ha has no good answer, at least not one that I know. Um, it's like I said, the only thing is, don't let it get that far. Uh, so that so that's a chore, or you feel super guilty on super guilty on super 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 guilty. Don't want to get that far. Pull off the band-aid. Talk to your family. Um, so, again, uh, hope this was helpful for some folks. If if not for you directly, maybe you know somebody that's in the, kind of the same boat, uh, please uh, subscribe and share uh, the video with somebody that uh, may get some use out of it. Um, even if it's just, you know, one little nugget. Uh, that, that I've shared uh, I, I, I know I'm not the only one out there so um, uh, please help spread the word that there is help out there there are people going through the same thing that you are or that your loved one is um, so again uh, that's it for today hope you guys have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time thank you